You are a newbie and you want orientation regarding watch sizes or you are a pro and you're just tired about that debate, what's the perfect size? You both can watch this video and after that you can make a mark under the topic, done. Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and our topic today is sizes. I've noticed that we have a new Christopher Ward coming up in 36 millimeters. It's funny, funny coincidence. In one of my last videos, I recommended the Sealander C63 GMT Christopher Ward as a nice used watch right now. And now they've introduced the same watch, but in a 36 millimeter size. So for smaller wrists or people who prefer smaller watches, now they can pick that 36. And I noticed that this size debate under videos in the comment section and on forums is still in full swing, believe it or not. People still arguing about watch sizes and so the idea for this video is to give you my two cents and I think some of you could see the topic after that a bit more relaxed, perhaps. Or you already see it super relaxed, then let me know in the comments what do you think about my approach here. Okay, let's start with a fun fact. Did you know that the highest people on planet Earth are the Dutch? Yes, it's a fact. An average man from the Netherlands measures 184 centimeters, average size. That means in every room in the Netherlands, you will find people over 190 or even over two meters body height, yep. And when you go on the contrary to Italy, then you will find an average size for men of 175 centimeters, so these both nations are very, very different in size. So when somebody states the perfect watch size for men is 40 millimeters, then we must ask for the Italian men or for the Dutch, because they are very different in size. Actually, the garment industry knows that. So when you buy, let's say, a jacket uh, size 38 in the UK and 38 in Italy, the one in Italy probably will be a bit smaller, although it wears the 38 because the garment industry knows that gentlemen in Italy are a bit smaller. Is this good or bad? Simple truth, we don't know. Next example, shoe sizes. We would never start this nonsense debate with shoes, with shoe sizes. Nobody would approach another man to tell him you have their size eight and a half. You should wear larger shoes, man. This is not appropriate for a man. You should really um, enlarge your shoe size. Would be complete nonsense. Same thing with your wrist. You may argue, I need delicate wrists because my profession is watchmaker, for example, and I handle very delicate things and it's very hand to have slender wrists. Or you say, no, I'm a blue collar worker and I have, I have things to lift and so I need large wrists. Then you have there a point. But overall, we have not the slightest clue as for humanity, what's better, a smaller wrist or a larger wrist? Our wrists are not shepherd dogs with that defect. Our wrists are perfect if they come big or if they come small. There's just no point. So the only thing, the only reasonable thing you can do is to pick a watch according to your wrist size. That sounds, of course, revolutionary, but I think there is some truth in it. And you see it all the time here under my videos when I um, have a 36 millimeter watch, then the bigger guys say, ah, that's not for me because it looks odd on me. See, perfect example. Somebody noticed, oh, I have a big wrist, the watch is small, looks odd, is too small for me according to my size, to my wrist size, perfect decision. So when Christopher Ward now launches this 36 millimeter watch, nobody has to be disappointed. By the way, I'm not affiliated with Christopher Ward, it's just an example, but nobody has to be um, disappointed you can choose if you're a bit larger then you choose 39 when you're a bit smaller you choose 36 perfect decision right and nobody should be disappointed when a watch company only offers a very big watch or only offers a very small watch because in 99% of the cases you see a certain type of watch that must be big or must be small. It's a bit like cars. When a company launches the next Humvee car, then you cannot complain, oh, it's too big. I mean, the entire idea for the thing is that it's big, right? Or take a computer chip. You cannot say, I mean, they're, they're getting really tiny now. And uh, you cannot say, oh, this is not the appropriate size for a computer chip. I want my computer chip big so that they can handle really, or they have really power. By the way, another fun fact, in the last days of the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union produced computer chips. And they had this plan, production plan with production goals. And the production goals were expressed in tons, tons. 
So they measured their success with computer chips in turn. So this is not a really smart idea turned out. And it's the um, same thing with our watch sizes, I think. Next point, genre. Look at this place. Here you see my Doobie and Schaldenbrand Diplomatic next to my Tissot Banana. And this Doobie here measures, cushion case, measures in width and length 32 millimeters. So very small for a man. And the other watch, the Tissot Banana, measures 50 millimeters in length. It's ridiculously big or let's say long compared to their Doobie. But both watches must have these measurements. Because on the one hand, the Doobie refers to the 20, where a small watch was seen as very advanced. And the name Diplomatic suggests, of course, that it's a bit hidden, a bit under the radar. You have a lot of functions, but they are small and compressed. You can put it under the conference table. You could put it under your, your sleeve and you hide it a bit away from the public. That's the idea behind the genre and the, and the story behind the watch, right? And the story of the Tissot is very different, although it also refers to the 20s. They tried to construct a curved tank case, but then they realized we cannot store properly a, a flat movement into that curve, only when the curve is very, very big and very long. Then we have enough room to put that thing in the watch. At least this is the story. I mean, maybe they would just like the look of this large thing and take these flamboyant numerals they really need some room to breathe there and I think it's a bit, yeah, a bit of a story but you see the point. Together with this nice curve, together with the large numerals, together with the font of the numeral, this creates something that must be big. So we have two very very different watches although they have their roots both in the 20s but they, they are in two different genres and so they must bring these measurements. So we had physical size, we had the watch genre, but now we have another topic and this is the imagination you have for the perfect watch. And the easy question, should a watch cover your entire wrist? Yes or no? Um, fact is, we don't know what's better. We have no clue. You will find online famous examples for people with very small watches on large wrists and vice versa. We have no clue what's better. So here we have clearly a matter of taste. I personally don't like when the watch covers my entire arm. For me personally, it's a bit like a painting where you have the subject surrounded by a bit of empty space or negative space, they sometimes call it, so that the thing can breathe. So subject, space, and then, then the frame, right? But perhaps you are really into tool watches. You are really into Flieger, for example. You have this big pilot watch. It's big because it must be legible and you like it that way and so you can tolerate it easily when the thing covers your entire arm. In fact, you want it that way so that it's even more legible for you. So perfect decision by the nature of the watch and by your requirements. But for most of us it's a bit like the decision between short swimming trunks and long swimming trunks. You can buy both models in the same shop around the globe which means that it's a accepted practice to wear both in our societies or go to the barber shop, you can order there a haircut over your ears or with naked ears. It's perfectly accepted in our civilization to wear haircuts that way or that way. No problem at all. And in fact, again, we have no clue what's better. Okay, last points, watch size trends. We often hear this, that now is the trend for smaller watches, now is the trend for bigger watches. I personally, I don't believe it a second. I don't believe it a second. I believe that we see more diversification. Again, this example, Christopher Ward, they had their Model 39, they realized this is a success and now they offer just the next size to sell more watches to other people, right? It's again the same thing like in the shoe industry. When you have there a rather small company, they don't start a model with every, every size of the planet. They start, for example, in Europe with 42, 43, 44, that's it. And when the model then is successful, then they add 41, 45, all the sizes between. That's all they do. They just start with one common number and then they diverse from that, right? And I think that's the same phenomenon in the watch world. When you see some releases with 36, then very, very likely they already produced that in 39, that thing, like our Christopher Ward example here. But I feel that I'm a bit too tolerant now. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we want hard rules, right? We want black and white, and so let's create here some black and white. Are there limits that just dictate a certain watch or prevent a certain watch? And in my eyes, there are actually two limits. There are just two lines you shouldn't cross. First line is the balcony. When you have a watch that is so large that it creates your balcony 
on both sides of your wrist. This just looks odd. It's not very comfortable. The strap looks odd. It's just not the really good thing to do. So when the surface of your wrist is 50 millimeters, I think that's your limit. Or take the other side of the picture. You prefer smaller, 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 smaller watches. But the problem is that with a watch, the lug width will shrink from 22, 20, 19, 80 to 16 millimeters. And in what shop do you want to find your 16 millimeter strap for men? Hmm? This will create an enormous problem. And so I think these are really the limits, the balcony and the strap or the lug width. All right, and now everything is sorted out nicely. You can pick your watch according to your body size, your wrist size, or you can really think about the genre of the watch, the nature of the watch. Should it be big? Should it be not big? Should it be small? And you take in consideration or you can share my, my limits. Perhaps you say, no, that isn't really a limit. I'm a construction worker. I love balconies and so it's not a problem to have a balcony on the wrist, but I think this is not very likely. The very likely is though that the video must stop here because I don't want to deliver a one hour sermon. I just wanted to give you my two cents regarding watch sizes. And I'm curious, what do you think about that topic? Let me know in the comments below. And that's all here. Thank you very much for your attention and until next time.